It is almost midnight, but I am going to create a video on how you could do animation titles for OBS. So this is going to be a quick little video on how you can make animation titles in multiple different ways for OBS. So to, it's just going to be a real quick video, not going to have too much detail, I don't want to do too much editing. I'm actually in OBS right now and these titles that you see are happening real time. So they aren't done in post, I can see them, there's going to be another one right here, there you go. Subscribe, please. I have these there so that I could say subscribe without actually having to say subscribe. And then here comes another one over here. Yeah. Um, anywho, I'm a multifaceted designer basically. I do websites, videos, photos, I'm a techie. Uh, I'm tired. <laughs> anywho, so we're going to go ahead. Get started. Um, we are going to go over the different ways that you can go about doing this. Um, firstly, you can create a transparent video source using QuickTime, um, exporting from After Effects or what have you. Um, I know um, that it works through After Effects, but I'm not sure of anything else. This is going to be very specific to what I've tried. I don't know about the other things. If you want me to check them out, please leave a comment down in this description. But I, know. but I use After Effects for the animations, and we're going to look at, basically, um, we're going to talk about, at least, you using video with a transparent background as a source in OBS, or uh, basically coding up a sequence of videos that have a transparent background that are encoded for web use or the WebM format. So we're going to go into, real quick, we're going to go into the uh, transparent video first. We're going to open up a media encoder and kind of just look at the difference or look at what the formatting looks like. It's a lot of looks. Anyway, quick little switch. I had some technical difficulties, but we are looking at After Effects now, and this is where I made this bottom left animation that you saw earlier, and that you'll continue to see. We're going to go ahead and export this guy into Media Encoder. Alright, and I actually have a preset called Transparent Video. We're just going to look at what that says, and what the settings show. Anybody that works through Adobe and the dynamic link knows that it takes forever. Anyway, so we got Apple ProRes uh, quadruple four. We just match the source settings and then we're gonna do render at maximum depth, the 709 and then the 16 BPC plus alpha. So, and then use, and then use maximum render quality here. And that'll export out to a transparent video that you can use as a video source in OBS. It's very simple in regards to that. You just click. Let me see if I could just bring this guy over. Sorry for the window vertigo. But you would just hit this and you would do media source, add a new one, and then it would bring you through the actual... Um, it would basically have prompts for you to select your video. Sorry, it's late and um, having technical difficulties in that. Tef Apparently I'm having mental, mental difficulties too. Having technical difficulties is never fun. All right, so we have that. We're gonna go ahead and cancel because we don't technically need to export this. I already have, that's why you see it on the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this guy out and also close out After Effects. And we're gonna talk about how you can do this with code. Now, 
There is a software that I recently downloaded called Shutter Encoder. Bring it over here. And with this, I just kind of, I go into Finder, I drag my file in is what you see here. And this is the settings that you need to be able to use it, to use a transparent video through WebM, which is basically the format that is used for HTML5. So it's very native, it's very, it's very used to, um, the HTML language is very used to the WebM. So it's very familiar, it's almost like cousin to cousin or, or sibling type language in a sense of, of development or coding, however you wanna look at that. But, so we're, so that's what I ended up doing. I used this information, especially with the enable alpha channel, that's very important and with all of this information here. I basically would bring this in and then hit start function after I selected these and it would it was processing perfectly fine, everything went well and I ended up developing some code to be able to have this, uh, have the videos play right off the bat and um, or initially uh, when I go ahead and start that source, which would be a browser source, and then they run on an interval here every 180 seconds. So um, that's what I ended up doing here. I have a div as a container. I have the div attribute timing minutes to add a timer to the, um, the interval, and basically it's just a placeholder, a custom placeholder to increment the, the seconds that, that continue on. And then there's the video with width at 100%, source at the, you know, the, the video name, and then the type. And then if the browser doesn't support the video tag, then this is there for that. It just won't load the source, and then it'll show this, this text instead. So, uh, with that being said, each one of these run on their own time with the coding in mind. And what ends up happening is they just kind of stack up on top of each other. That's why you see one at one over another. So. This starts at a certain interval, and then this will start 10 seconds later. This will start 35 seconds later, because I'm adding the 25 and the 10 here, and then, and then an additional 35 seconds later is when the last animation runs. And 35 seconds is because this is in, I believe it's milliseconds, so you kind of have to do the math on that. Or you could calculate something else. You could make a new function that calculates based off of actual seconds, and then it would just do the math for you, whatever you want to do. But um, this is the, the, the uh, code that I was using here is CSS, HTML, of course, and JavaScript down here with a little help of jQuery. And then, of course, this is HTML. So that's what I was able to do, and initially, you could basically load any source into um, OBS that basically allows a source because what happens is is with, with OBS, you can add a local web source. So it could be local on the computer, it could be a feed, it could be your, it, you could be a page of some sort. As long as it's relatively simple, I believe, it should be able to load it through. That's kind of how how Streamlab alerts and whatnot works, and like chat boxes and stuff. That's, this, this is the method that they use, and as long as you can develop your own titles, whether it be with animation, or with After Effects for another program, or with, with uh, web animations, like um, scaling and just animation keyframes through CSS, then you should be able to make a title. But that's it for now. I hope you guys learned something. Um, I just wanted to get this video out real quick. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Remember your heart. Peace.